The idea is a good one. Capture carbon coming from coal and other power plants and bury it so it can't warm the climate. But the execution turns out to be a little tricky. In fact, right now, Canada has the only power plant in the world that is capturing and storing carbon on a commercial scale in Estevan, Saskatchewan. But it has not been without problems. The $1.5 billion project is a flagship initiative of Sask Power. The hope is to capture 800,000 tons of carbon dioxide in 2016, equivalent to taking about 200,000 vehicles off the road for a year. Among the concern is that carbon dioxide in pure gas or liquid form that is pumped underground might escape back to the atmosphere. So storage sites would have to be monitored for decades, if not centuries. But a group of scientists have been working with an Icelandic utility for several years on a different approach. Dissolving the gas with water and pumping the resulting mixture, a kind of soda water, down into certain kinds of rocks. That's where CO2 reacts with the rock to form a mineral called calcite. By basically turning the gas into stone, scientists can lock it away permanently. Uh, we actually dissolve the CO2 during uh, injection, uh, so we are not injecting uh, gas, uh, but rather uh, dissolve CO2, and uh, that makes the injection uh, safer uh, to the extent that uh, the injected fluid is, fluid is then not buoyant, so it doesn't want to escape back into the atmosphere. Now, one key to the approach is to find the right kind of rock. Volcanic rocks called basalts are excellent for this process because they are rich in calcium, magnesium and iron which react with the CO2. And since Iceland is one of the most active volcanic regions on Earth, there's basically nothing but basalt. It's the perfect test site for the theory. The project, called CarbFix, uses carbon dioxide that bubbles up naturally with a hot magma that powers a geothermal electrical generating plant. The results, just recently published, were very promising. About 95% of the carbon dioxide was converted into calcite. And even more important, the conversion happened relatively quickly, in less than two years. There are still questions about whether the technology will prove useful in the fight against global warming. It would have to be scaled up enormously. A lot of water is needed, along with the right kind of rock. I think uh, in the fight against global, you know, climate change and global warming, we need a wide set of, of uh, solutions. There is no one solution. But if we come up with uh, several of, of uh, possible solutions and apply them all, hopefully we are able to be successful. And now you're Science Smart. If you have a science question on your mind, send me a tweet and I'll try to get it answered.